In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Facebook pixel to ensure that your ads get delivered to your biggest audience possible, which includes iOS and Apple devices. If you do not set up your pixel this way, there's a chance that your ads will not be delivered to people that are using Apple or iOS devices. My name is Kevin Trogge. I'm the founder and owner of Brand Arrow, and we help companies grow using paid advertising. Now, before we get started, I just wanna give you a quick rundown of what's going on here and why we have to set up a pixel this way. But the main thing here is that Apple has now created new rules that make app developers ask their users if they wanna be tracked or not. Now, whenever you open up an app up for the first time, it'll say, would you like this app to track you, allow them to track you? Most people are saying no. I think it's over 90% of people say no, they don't wanna be tracked. Now that is causing issues for people like Facebook to be able to track people after they're leaving the app and getting any data back to understand what's going on. And that's very important when you're running ads because you need that data to tell you if an ad is performing well or not. And then you can turn the ones off that aren't performing well and then you keep the ones that are, are performing well turned on. So this caused a lot of issues for advertisers because now we're losing a lot of tracking, a lot of ability to track our users. But there's one thing you can do from the very beginning and that is setting up your pixel the right way. So what I wanna do is I wanna jump into um, business, business settings here and show you how to get your pixel set up the right way to make sure that you can optimize your ads and get it in front of the biggest audience possible. So we're gonna go into business settings. It's simply business.facebook.com backslash settings. You go into here and go down to the data sources in the pixel section. If you don't have a pixel, you can create a new one. I already have a couple of them here already set up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the pixel in events manager. So it'll open this up into a new menu here, our new uh, interface. And whenever you're setting up your pixel for the first time, you have a couple of options. You can set up the, put up the pixel on your website manually by copying the code and put on menu, or there's a lot of tools out there that actually integrate directly with the Facebook pixel. And if you have uh, your website set up on one of those, let's see, it should give you an option here. You can do manually or you can use a part partner integration. If you are using a website that has a partner integration with Facebook, I highly recommend setting your pixel up through that partner integration because a lot of those websites have something called CAPI, conversion APIs that will basically talk to Facebook directly and give data back to Facebook to give you more accurate data on your campaigns. If you don't have a partner integration, no big deal, you can install that code manually. And I'm just gonna go, go ahead and, and show you how to do this manually real quick so I don't have to walk through all the steps in the partner integrations. Plus there's a ton of them, so I'm not gonna be able to show you them all. So we're just gonna act like we're setting up manually. Um, we need to set up the base code. We're gonna go ahead and copy it. This is a site that is on WordPress. By the way, WordPress does have an integration. It's a plugin, you have to, so they do have a partner integration, so I would use that. But typically, um, right now I'm just gonna use the manually code just to get this done. So let's go ahead and save. We have the pixel installed now. Hit continue, continue. We're gonna set up events right now. We'll have to verify the domain. I'll show you how to do that real quick and go to pixel overview. So what we wanna do is we want to make sure this picture is filing, firing. So we're gonna go to the website and there I have the pixel helper turned on and boom, there are the pixel. The pixel is working, perfect. So now we got the pixel working. Another thing you have to do, and this is very important, is you have to verify your domain now. So the way you do that is you can either do it through Events Manager or if you're in business settings, you can go to Brand Safety, go to Domains, and hit Add Domain. So we're gonna hit kevintragi.com, the domain that we're using, and click Add. There are several ways to do this. You can add meta tag to your HTML source code, you can add HTML file to your root directory, or you can update the DNS text record with your domain registrar. So I'm just gonna do the add meta tag to your HTML source codes because I already have it open. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this meta tag right here. Same thing as that we did the pixel, we're just gonna drop it right up here. And we're gonna hit save. Sometimes it takes a second for it to populate, but we're gonna try to see if we can verify it. Boom, done, verified, awesome. Now that that's verified, we can go back into Events Manager. 
now that we have the very, this is the very important step. So let's go refresh this. It needs to make sure that, okay, there you go. It needed to make sure that the data was being delivered to the pixel. So this is where you're going to get this alert. And this is the step that is very important now is setting up your aggregated event measurement protocols. So go down here, there's a tab that says aggregated event measurement. Go ahead and click on that tab and configure web events. If you do not do this, there's a chance that your ads won't be delivered to iOS devices that opted out of tracking. So you need to make sure you set this up. So go ahead and configure web events. And we need to choose the um, domain that we're gonna be using. Hit manage events. And just basically saying, don't make a bunch of frequent changes. It needs to make sure that this data stays on there and you're not changing it all the time. And we basically get eight events that we can add there. So event is something where somebody either becomes a lead or they do something important on your website and you wanna track that as an event. So you can get up to eight events here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add the most common ones and if you're, every business is a little bit differently so you might need to add different events for your business. So we're gonna add the common ones. Pixel, or test three, that's what we're using. Purchase, that's the pretty common one. You want people to buy stuff. So add that one. Lead is another good one, we'll add lead. Again, every business is different, so make sure you're, you figure out what events that are important for your business before you start adding these. Uh, add payment info, let's add that. Uh, car, uh, checkout, initiate checkout. Another one I like to use, I like to use this one called view content. So if you have important content that they're viewing, you can trigger that event. And then another one is subscription. You know, if you got a if you got a newsletter or something, you want them to subscribe. You don't have to add all eight, you can add just one or two that you think are important, but we're gonna add eight just to have everything here. We'll say, let's say an application. So now, now that you have all these events set up, you need to set these up in priority. The highest priority is usually gonna be something like purchase. That's gonna be the highest priority event that you wanna set up. Then lowest is gonna be something like, probably like view content, right? So then you need to prioritize these events um, and make sure that they're set up so that when I say highest priority, um, again, the closest they are getting to purchase, that's the highest priority you want that event. And the reason why you set up this way is because if a, if a lead comes in and they say like, let's just say they trigger the view content event, that lead will then be measured by, that event will be tagged that lead as view content. But as it moves up, the next event is basically what's labeled as that event on that lead. And then it goes to the next event. So basically you can only have one event assigned to that lead, right? or that, that user. So only one event gets assigned to the user. So that user can no longer have like eight different events assigned to it, only gets one event assigned to it. So that you want, if it's, if somebody makes a purchase, you want that to be the event that's being recorded. You don't want the event of view content being recorded because that's not as important as the purchase. Hopefully that makes sense, but you want to make sure that you have these in order. So what we're gonna do is view content, We'll say subscribe is probably the next one. We'll say then lead. We'll say they have to submit an application after they become a lead to like be part of a program or something. We'll say add to cart. After that, initiate checkout, add payment, and then purchase. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit apply. We'll confirm the changes. Usually gives us alert. Let's see if it does it. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So now that is set up, your pixel will now, is now prioritized for iOS 14. And your ads will be delivered to devices that have opted out of uh, tracking on iOS 14 devices or above. If you don't set this up, there's a good chance that your ads will not run to people that have opted out of that tracking. So this is the new way to set up your pixel. Hopefully this 
tutorial was easy enough for you to go step by step to set yours up but make sure you're doing this if you're not if it's not set up this way again you have a chance that you won't be able to reach your entire audience um, particularly people on Apple devices so if you like this video always appreciate a like we re release these videos uh, try to release them once a week so if you want to stay in tune with us please subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell that way you can get all the new videos that come out and I really appreciate you guys sticking around and watching this video thank you